If I didn't know what I was doing, nobody would want to come and sail with me. <laughs> yeah. If my boat wasn't up to scratch, nobody would want to sail with me. And those are the people that you'll probably end up with. You see. So you've got to be so careful because it can be a treacherous coast and you're on a boat with a skipper that doesn't know what he's doing. Despite predictions to the contrary, I get the impression that Bernard is actually quite a competent skipper. I haven't been sailing with him, but I take his obsessive over-preparedness as a positive sign. Ideally, we'll cross the Mozambique Channel in three days. So that's the course you plotted. So that's the rum line to get the kind of a straight course. Although, to be fair, I expected to follow the rum line to Madagascar this whole trip, and it hasn't exactly worked out that way. While we wait for a weather window, I've been preparing myself for the passage, including a visit to the local shark museum, featuring an array of items with enormous bites out of them. Everyone talks about a series of attacks here that's come to be known as Black December. Now James will pass the stomach of the shark. The reason for us looking at the contents of the shark's stomach is to see their diets and how do we as humans fit into their diets. Given that the odds of being attacked by a shark are less than 1 in 246 million, it's actually more likely that Bernard and I will kill each other than a shark kill either one of us. cleared out the four cabin for me, and I've moved over from the hostel. Okay, well, all yours. Thanks. Apparently he bought the boat two years ago, and has been all this time refurbishing it in preparation for this crossing. Two items of interest here. One, this will be his first passage on Salalami. And two, you were dealing with the guy's wife. Yeah, because he died. How did he die? Heart attack. On the boat. Yeah. The previous owner died on board. On the passage from Australia to uh, South Africa. It occurs to me that if the skipper died in the main cabin, his wife likely would have left the corpse there and slept here in my cabin. But that if he died anywhere else on the boat, his wife most likely would have dragged the corpse here and continued sleeping in her cabin. But they were going to circumnavigate. They were at the end of their circumnavigation. And he didn't make it. No, he died. So she got rescued with a dead body on board. I think it's more likely than not, therefore, that mine was the corpse cabin. Not that I care. Now it's time for me to leave. Uh, enjoy the yacht, see if I made the right choice. I'm going to keep her. No kidding. You yeah, because I bought, I bought the yacht two years ago, yeah. spent all this time refurbishing her. Uh, one of the major problems was that here it takes endless to have the problem sorted out. And uh, now uh, I sailed her a little bit in the harbor, some regattas over the weekend, but I've never, I've never made a passage with. And it's only when you start to make passages that you really see how it is. So what is wrong with the wind right now? Basically, we are here in a place where you, you have to face the Agulas current. Uh -huh. It's where it comes the narrow and where the current is the strongest. Okay. Now, ideal weather to go up is a southwesterly wind. Uh -huh. But now the problem is that we have a current going down and the wind coming up. And that builds abnormal waves. So now if you want to meet a 20 meter high wave, not on this year. <laughs> Especially now it blows for, it's the second day it's blowing. So now the sea outside is completely awful. So now what we have to wait is that the situation change. Uh -huh. Okay, so the winds are going from southwesterly, easterly, northeasterly. Well, I am really looking forward to going. I mean, I really can't wait. Yeah, boys, you <laughs> you have to be patient. So after finally finding a boat, now I'm waiting for wind. 
feels a little bit like waiting for one's car to fill with gas. In the boat's defense, it's gas is free. Except we also had to fill it with gas, which is not free. Now Mr. Newton is working. That's yeah, better than the old uh, sucking method, huh? But I'm taking advantage of the delay to learn the rules of the sea. A wave coming to you, these are tons of water. What is your body doing against 10 tons of water? Yeah. It just goes with. <laughs> then it's done, you're over. Oh. It's just that you are not allowed to go overboard. <laughs> it's uh, as simple as that. You are not allowed to put anything in the bowl before it has gone through you. <laughs> What about paper? The toilet paper is uh, is fine. Toilet paper is here. No, it's fine. That's okay. Uh, so you you can use. Because technically that hasn't gone through me. Toilet paper. It's a basic rule: one hand for you and one hand for the yacht. Yeah. Uh, there is no shame on the yacht. I mean, if you feel comfortable going on, on hands and knees, there is nothing wrong about that. It's just how you feel comfortable and how safely you come forward. I prefer to be flat on my belly. I'm quite tall, uh, on a yacht gives me quite a huge momentum and I have to hold my weight. So higher I stay, bigger is the momentum. And lower I stay, lower is my, is my momentum and better I come forward. Mm -hmm. So maybe a smaller, tinier guy has it more easier to, to go forward than me. It's, but it's just... Uh, Who are you calling tiny? Uh, everything is ready. I plan uh, to leave tomorrow morning with the coming southwesterly if the conditions are still the same over there. I'm happy to get going early tomorrow morning and just try to get to the job with three cups up there. So good luck to you guys. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Fred. Uh, Salulami on the side. We're clearing out today. Cross the channel in convoy with Bernard's friends on a catamaran called Mojo. I'm so excited to leave that I can barely draw another boat. Does he need to put the 50 rand into no. his passport? No. Uh, no. Please. No? No. It will work in a lot of places. Not yet. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. This is the wrong place. No, no. I think it can cause a lot more. Did anybody come and inspect the boat for South Africa? holiday video but now we, we just rewound to the picture I took and now I'm taping over it. It's, it's taping over right now. If you saw me I rewound it to the beginning and now I'm taping over it. I, I, I apologize. You don't come into people's offices and start recording. You're absolutely right and I, and I sincerely apologize. You don't even come into the harbor with a camera. Are you aware of it? No I, I didn't know. I just holiday snaps and now I'm recording over it and I, I sincerely apologize.
have I have a light raft service. I have an eco. I have flag, horn, flares, all the shit. It's just guy covering his ass. That's he's got a rubber stamp that says you can go out the port. And if you sink when you leave the port, he doesn't want to be responsible. Yeah, yeah, that's clear. Isn't it possible to run? Doesn't anyone do that anymore? You could. You could go for a day sail and just not come back. Uh -huh. But then I think you you cause a lot of trouble for yourself if you didn't come back. Uh -huh. Over 2,000 rand more to pay. Well, that's the uh, price of my passage, Bernard. Mm -hmm. That's the price of my passage. It's a cake of shit. <laughs> and every day you have to eat rice. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. They really want that trash. Clean laundry. That's my bill tongue. Oh, bill tongue. Foi, man, you're doing it. Foi. Pop, pop. No, I come here, man. Yeah, Is that Zulu? Afrikaans. Afrikaans. Ah, it's an Afrikaans speaking dog. She's Dutch. Did she clear the boat? It's yeah, the boat. she's cleared it. Oh, good. Yeah, man, foi, die. That was amazing. I'm not going against them. I want to leave this fucking country. Hello? Okay. Yes? Hello? Hey, how are you? Fine. See, they brought the whole police force. Yeah, they finally found me. <laughs> Have a good day. See you later. <laughs> They're getting the attraction of. Yeah. <laughs> Two years I have been here. Two years. I never saw these guys. Suddenly, tlang, they appear. <laughs> Good to 
leave by Saturday morning because there is a next southwesterly coming. More looking that we will leave by the end of the week. Okay. So now we'll see how it's coming forward. But uh, my plan would be that we clear out on Friday and that we leave on uh, Sunday. Sailing is a little bit a uh, waiting process. Just prior to our leaving, Bernard appears to be looking at the manual. Yeah. <laughs> Bonne chance, au revoir, bon voyage. All right. Merci. Bon voyage. Tout bon. Bernard's first act at sea was to lower the South African colors and fly his Swiss flag. I told him that I'd never been seasick and promised that I wouldn't get seasick. But man. Man, oh man, oh man. I guess I've never really been at sea. I think I just need to lie down for a bit. Something I didn't know about making a passage is that someone has to stay up all night, scanning the horizon to make sure we don't get run over by a cargo ship. Bernard and I are taking alternating three-hour shifts. Fortunately, I stopped in a thrift shop before leaving Durban and replenished my books. When we met, I disclosed to Bernard that I had no sailing experience, and he said it wouldn't be a problem. But I think he assumed that even a novice would know certain basic facts and terms. And explaining everything is more annoying than I think he thought it would be. So what does it mean to jam the drum? What does it mean? Yeah. What is, I don't understand your question. What is the drum? The drum is what the... Uh... The drum is what rolls in the Genoa. Yeah. The, the line has to be in the drum. If it's okay. over the drum around the, the forestay, okay. it's not working.
one right here. Should I hold it? No, you hold nothing. <laughs> You have to figure out that you cannot hold that. Yeah. You never will. And if it, you need to hold it, uh -huh. she did the way. Voila. <laughs> Any other attempt ends with something broken on your body. Okay. okay. And let me go forward. And we can start again. Can you ease the main again? Okay. The rigging is a muddle to me. It's a, a cobweb, as far as I can tell. And when Bernard tells me to do something, it's just pull this rope or pull that. And I don't know what I'm pulling or if it's not working. I may not be an experienced sailor, but even I can tell that our sails don't have wind in them again today. Our mast is not tensed like a bow. It seems as if we've been running the engine almost constantly.
plan, Bernard? What's the plan? <laughs> Waiting for the wind. Not very much more to do. Uh. And they say no wind today, no wind tomorrow. Very little. Uh. And how's the fuel consumption? Well, I guess we already used uh, what we uh, bought. So, uh, yeah, we have to start be a little bit careful. Well, at least we have southeasterly winds, which uh, is better. Now, if I could have it a little bit stronger, we can go straight up. But... Now, wait a second. What do you mean that we've used what we brought? We bought the fuel you carried with me. Yes. It's already in the air. <laughs> you have more, right? No answer. Obviously there's starting to be some tension between Bernard and me. Maybe the bizarre sleeping schedule is starting to get to us. But I also guess it's just a fact that there are some housemates with whom you click and some with whom you don't. That isn't a division of good and bad, but more like a grouping of people with fundamentally different mindsets. Now that I think of it, Bernard Youngshin and freshman year Matt would probably get along great as housemates. This kind of cooking requires a lot of lower body strength. Mm -hmm. We've been on this little boat together a lot longer than either anticipated, and only out of practical necessity. I need a ride, and he needs someone to look for cargo ships while he sleeps. It would be quite a different trip to do with a friend, or someone who I'm sure would be my friend, if only given the chance to know me. What's important is that we forgive the small annoyances. Two people on a boat can't long survive if they catalog one another's crimes. You wanna do the mainsail? Sorry? You're gonna do the mainsail? We are going to uh, put the mainsail up. Yes.
one. As we were bringing in the Genoa and I was putting tension on the line, he cried out, for fuck's sake, next time I will let you pull it in and see how you like that tension. I put too much tension on the line, apparently. Two, the green cord, red cord incident. Three, when I asked if the kitchen tap was potable water, he said, as if talking to a child, no, didn't I show you where the drinking water was? Three weeks ago, I said. Four, after the Genoa incident, he pointedly furled it unaided, manning both ropes as I sat idly by. Five, uses way too much garlic. Six, told me to wake him if our speed dropped below four knots, then rose later and, examining the gauge, exclaimed, I asked you to wake me if we dropped below five knots, didn't I? I thought you said four knots, I answered. We seem to be having a communication problem, he said. Seven, I paid a share of the groceries, but have yet to see any instant dry yeast. Eight, I saw a light on the horizon and hurried to wake him. That is the moon, he said, patiently. Didn't become angry with me. Point in favor. Nine. Repeated himself in regards to the green cord, red cord incident. And when finally I interjected, all right, I get the point, cried. This is what I hate about the television. The people will not allow the other people to finish. Ten. I said, hey, you've got a fishing rod in the cabin, don't you? You won't catch anything here with a rod, he said. Really? Why? I asked hoping for a piece of nautical wisdom. Instead, he exhaled, irritated, and, raising his hand from the chart table, thumped it. Incredible how empty the ocean has been. I haven't seen a fish, much less a shark. Once while I stared at the water, a bit of flotsam drifted past, and I was thrilled. I'd love a shark attack right now. I entertained thoughts of mutiny, of setting Bernard adrift in the lifeboat. Unfortunately, we would both still be in the doldrums, and it would be awkward. I'm trying to remember that relative to, say, a day at work, this is idyllic. My mind under such conditions ought to fly. Instead, it too bobs on a flat sea, stagnant in its own neural doldrum. You realize when there's no wind to fill your mental sail in the form of news and events, how much you depend upon that stimulation. When I try to write something, I find myself consumed with the same old problems. decided to uh, make a kind of rest day because it's no wind and I'm trying to save uh, my fuel and I uh, with no sails and uh, five knots of uh, wind 
from east, I'm doing 1.2 knots on the ground. So I have a very uh, a current bringing me north. Over. Uh, it's really difficult at present. Uh, nobody quite seems to know what we're just going to do. So another drift tomorrow, unfortunately. Eh? Thank you very much, Fred. Uh, Salulami on the side. Some people have personality changes up there. Personality changes? But it's not the same person that you've been chatting up on shore and you get to know. They become totally different. And so, and it can be scary, really scary. They, I don't know if it's why they change, I'm not a psychologist, whether it's fear or insecurity or what, but they, they can really change and make life miserable. sky wind. What is very interesting when you are in the cinema is that on the screen they are actors and then in the cinema they are spectators and like everybody who grows up makes studies learns a job and then has to work every day to earn his money. It's like uh, being an actor in the movie. And I was an actor in a movie. And then suddenly the movie was not good anymore. So, yeah, what do you do? If you as spectator, you go to a movie place, you look a movie and you don't like it, what do you do? They walk out. You walk out. Can an actor walk out of his movie? I guess he can. No, he cannot. No, he is in the movie. It's, it's fixed on, the, on the, the film and it's played on the screen. He cannot say, hey guys, don't you find this movie boring? Uh, I leave you cheers. Well, he can change the course of events. He can act differently. No, he can do nothing. You, come, come on. Wait, you're losing me. Huh? You're losing me. But you say that you changed your... Uh... Yes, I suddenly find out as actor that I didn't like the movie I was playing in. And then I said, because you cannot escape of the movie. I, one day I realized that. And then I said, yes, now I, I destroy this movie <laughs> because it's of no sense. And I become a spectator. Do you think that's what you've chosen as spectatorhood? Absolutely. Really? But because it's easy. If you don't like the if you don't like the scenario, you leave. But you're in another scenario. Sorry? You're in a new scenario. Yeah. You're but in a, a new as movie. spectator, <laughs> not anymore as actor. You're in a And this you have to think about 
and you have to make work your brain to find a solution to what I told you. Obviously, there are new dramas in your life now, and there are new frustrations. Yeah. You never get away from that. Yes, I can go away. <laughs> I spent two frustrating years in South Africa, yes. and now where am I? On my way. <laughs> we, we just spent two days in the doldrums. This is not a drama. It got a little dramatic because uh, we were sniping at each other. I don't open this debate with you with the camera on. It's <laughs> done. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because as I told you already, I also have a private life. And what I don't like is that every time something seems to be attracting you, you jump on your camera <laughs> and without uh, respect, completely respectless, you are taking pictures. But that's probably part of your job and that's probably what you need to yeah. make your documentations uh, that makes you earn your money and uh, no, 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 that there's... you also can uh, have a happy life. No, it, it definitely doesn't earn any money. It it's... ends somewhere and probably not in a cupboard of your desk at home. Yeah, well, yes and no. Yeah, it's a funny, it's a funny thing that I do, you're right. And you're right, I... I do it with some guilt. So? Sometimes when I see something that, that seems true, or that seems to reflect uh, the way humans behave, I just... It overcomes my feeling that I should be polite. So I apologize for that. Yeah, you, I know you apologize, but it doesn't end anything that now this is pictures of Let's that talk. movie, and then you leave with, and I don't know what you are going to do with that. You already <laughs> did it while well, we had this problem by the port control. Oh, I am so sorry. But it's still printed on your tapes, and I don't know what you are going to do with that. You see? And of course, when I met you, you said, oh, you don't mind if I, because uh, I, if I take uh, pictures, because I, uh, uh, well, because it uh, was looking that a little bit as a hobby. And now knowing you a little bit better, I know it's far, 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 far away from just a hobby. <laughs> You're right. It's, it's, uh, ah, I, see? So, well, I think of it as, a, as an art. You're right. Yeah, it's an art, but anybody is ready to do anything to get the sensation because it brings money, it brings li people listening to, because people want, uh, they need uh, something, uh, they need horror, they need dramas, they need that, okay? Yeah. And to do that, you cannot be the gentle, polite journalist. But you know, when you just use what is sensational and you just manipulate footage, it's not a complex way to treat the material and it comes off as simple and shallow. And that's never my intention to give a simple treatment of anything. I. Uh, what do I know about that? I, what I'm, do I know? You don't. You don't. But I'm. I'm just telling you that uh, my work will be more interesting if I show first, you know, my own mistakes, and if I just try to deal with the material in as complex a way as possible. And that means showing people how they are good and not just how they are bad. You know, that's not interesting. Well, is that going to change the people's life? Is that going to uh, make them better? I have a huge doubt about <laughs> that. It's like these bloody uh, TV serials, uh, Ball and the Beauty and all this shit. Yes. It's putting on the screen what people are facing every day. Uh -huh. But now we involve very rich, wealthy people. Put it in this, in this drama because that makes the Vox Populi very happy and they say, Ha, ah, you see, not, not only we are in the shit, these people are in the shit too. And what I am very uh, scared about is how far can all this shit brought at the TV, how far can that uh, influence people's life? And I think it's completely influencing people's lives. It's because we need to entertain the folk. And as long the folk is entertained, he's not thinking about uh, the bad condition he is in it and all the dramas who are happening in our society. I cannot understand in our century 
how can things go so bad as they are going and that nothing is done to do it. It's just because the folk is not reacting. And now for the people who are in power, what is very important is to look that the crowd stays down and now we have to entertain them. But it's very. this was already existing yeah. when the, by the Roman. No, they no, they this had is the new. huge, uh, um, how was it circus. called? Circus. Circus? Yes. And they were killing people, gladiators, uh, lions eating Christians or torturing people or whatever it is. It's just to, to um, entertain the, the folk. It hasn't changed and it, it will never change. And what? that's why I told you, I don't want to be part of this movie anymore. This movie? Yeah. You mean my movie? No. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. You're very short thinking, eh? You're very short thinking. But do you really think that? Oh, yeah. You do? What did I tell you? How did I start my story before? That life is a movie. Yes, I know and that. And I, I don't that. want to be part of this movie, of this life, like I just described. Yes, I, I didn't forget your original metaphor. I remembered it. So, and now I am telling you I don't want to be part of this movie anymore. And now you're talking about your stupid little bloody camera. <laughs> we, we were talking about two movies, and I just wanted to be clear which movie you were talking ah, about. Okay. I was way off. So you see, it's very difficult uh, when you don't uh, when you don't uh, manage a language how to make how to make the folk follow your mind. Yeah. And this I cannot. So what am I doing? Looking for an explanation for the tension between us. I blamed sleep deprivation and the way the sea changes a man and my perceived lack of seamanship. I thought it was because I say annoying things. Just prior to our leaving, Bernard appears to be looking at the manual. I'm a smart ass. I prefer to be flat on my belly. Deliberately annoying. Any bites yet? And that's part of it, yes. But Bernard tried to escape a self-obsessed culture, addicted to drama, only to end up stuck on a boat in the doldrums with that culture personified. How different am I from a drug-sniffing dog rooting through his private life? torturing him for the benefit of the Volk, gnawing at him. I don't want to be disrespectful. I'd rather be a decent person than a good journaliste. So the right thing to do would be to tape over it. Say, it's recording. I was just recording holiday video, but now I've rewound. I'm taping over it. I'm taping over it right now. And I sincerely apologize. Well... There's no question that I use people. Yo! I literally use other people's images and lives. The real question is, do I ill use them? Exploitation occurs when you take someone's rich and complicated life and make it smaller. When you reduce it to something less than it wants, either because it suits you or your agenda, or you're not sufficiently skilled to portray them in full. And I'm guilty of all of these sometimes, particularly the latter, because I am short thinking. Often I've looked so hard for something in the ocean that I failed to see the ocean, which has meanwhile been putting on a show, alternately like mercury or tea. Sometimes it's like dunes, molten glass, petroleum, obsidian, grape juice, like an ocean on an alien world. To do justice to the complexity of human existence is not easy, but I do want to make something that at least tries to be fair. I want to make something that at least tries to get everything in it. And however much of a justification that is, however inadequate it is, I think, ultimately, in its own way, respectful. If you're dissatisfied with the things that are on television, and you should be, I mean, it's garbage, but there needs to be something to take its place. There needs to be somebody making something that is more interested in life as it really exists, and in people, how they really think, in all their complexity. But you cannot influence it. You cannot. Yes, they are definitely very, very interesting documentaries and things done and brought on TV. 
Uh, or what is an interesting movie? This is another big question. Well, I think that an interesting movie is to see how a yacht works. You know, and uh, uh, yes. I mean, because well, personally, many people. I don't know. You know, all my life I've had a very romantic idea about making a passage somewhere, and I know a lot of people who, when I told them what I was doing, they say, "Oh, wow, really? I've always wanted to do that." And now, halfway through, and seeing all the interesting things about how a yacht works, just the mundane details of that to me is what's fascinating about a lot of things. But all I can say is that there were one or two things that I saw as a kid that were very important to me and that, you know, changed the way I thought about things just because they were intelligent and it occurred to me that these were better than everything else I was seeing. This, is, this was more important and more truthful than anything else I was seeing. Yeah, and it's important that that stuff get made, however hard it is to find. Somebody will find it and it'll change, you know, it'll change their life. And you're right, you can't fight the soap operas. Bold and the Beautiful, it's, it, it reaches too many people, but you can, you can reach a few people, and they can kind of prevent the whole society from going in the shitter. Wow, well, this is utopia. <laughs> that doesn't sound like my idea of a utopia. That sounds like a dystopia. <laughs>